My name is Scott Floyd, and I am Senior Fellow and Director of Counseling Programs here at BH Carroll. On behalf of the faculty and administration, we welcome you to BH Carroll Theological Institute's 2021 Convocation and Graduation Ceremony. We are, we are glad to celebrate with you this significant event in the life journey of each of our graduating students. We would like to recognize several groups of individuals who have contributed to the work done here at BH Carroll. Our Board of Governors, who oversees the functioning of the institution. Our distinguished, distinguished fellows, resident fellows, teaching fellows, supervisors, and administrative staff who guide our students in the edu educational process. BH Carroll alumni from around the world. Family members of our graduates, including spouses, children, parents, and other family members who have supported, encouraged, and prayed for these through years of study. Church members or friends of graduates who have also walked alongside our students in their time here at BH Carroll. We also want to express our appreciation to the singing men of North Central Texas under the direction of Trent Blackley. This group has added a depth and richness to B.H. Carroll graduations for more than a decade, and we are grateful to have them join us again this year. B.H. Carroll treats its convocation and graduation not just as a celebration of the efforts and accomplishments of students, but also as a worship event where we remember God's work in the lives of these students over the last several years. Join us now as we do just that, as we celebrate and worship together. I'm reading from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regarding one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself to becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for these graduates. We thank you for the hard work and the perseverance through which they have endured. We bless your name, Father, for these graduates in their respective ministries, wherever they shall find themselves. We ask your blessing, your continued blessing on their ministries as they go throughout, not just the United States, but through, throughout the whole earth. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for allowing us as ministers of your gospel to help instruct them, guide them, and prepare them. We ask your blessing over this, um, over this graduation in the name of Christ. Amen. It's been whispered at the bedside 
When a loved one said goodbye It's been sung by kids in Sunday school As wonder filled their eyes It's been trampled on by scorners Cherished by the saints But only through its power Can hopeless souls be saved At the name of Jesus Kings lay down their crowns At the name of Jesus who've never heard spoken by the martyrs in their precious dying words denied by his disciples and taken away but the mighty name of Jesus forever will remain at the name I want to address today our graduates and their families, our faculty, our staff, with a message that the Lord's put on my heart. It's been since 2014 that I addressed convocation. Uh, I've been so grateful to uh, have those who have spoken to you over the years in that interval who have brought a message for the Lord. But I really felt like it was time for us to be just reminded of some things as well as uh, encouraged in the vocation and calling that God has placed on your life, that you be bold where you live and where you serve. I'm always intrigued by the Apostle Paul because he left an established institution and a lifestyle of security and a career path that was very, very clear when he met the risen Lord, his life was completely disruptive 
disrupted and he moved into areas in which he had never been before. Yet in the power of the Holy Spirit and the certainty of the call on his life, he boldly took the message of Jesus Christ. And I want you who are graduates, particularly today, to know that you are on that same mission and you have that same message. So today I want us to reflect upon Paul's message and Paul's mission and how those apply directly to you where God has placed you and how God has trained you. Let's look first at his message. The message that uh, Paul proclaimed was the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it was a disruptive message. It was a subversive message. And so when he wrote uh, his friends in Rome uh, before his visit there, he wrote this that became a message that had, has changed the hearts of many through the years, Martin Luther, the reformer in particular. When he wrote these words inspired by the Holy Spirit, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God and salvation to those who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. In it, he says, the righteousness of God has been revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. As you know, Paul ministered in a honor-shame society, culture. And in his day, uh, to even proclaim honor for yourself was expected. Uh, the word philotomeo was a word in which I uh, honor or I uh, love, befriend, honor. And it was very typical for us, for uh, folks then, <laughs> I say us even now, to, to let people know, you know what, what we're up to and be honored by that. And the opposite of that was humilitas, uh, to be degraded, to be shamed. And so when Paul chose this word, I am not ashamed of the gospel, he was announcing that while what he preached was offensive, was confusing, was subversive, he would never back down from that because of the boldness he received in his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, uh, there were those who who would say to him that you, you've got to be ashamed. You, have a, you claim to have a Messiah who was crucified. That doesn't make sense. And nor does an executed God make any sense. Either the Greek, uh, Greek or the uh, Roman. And that's why he wrote in, in 1 Corinthians that uh, it is a stumbling block to the Jew and foolishness to the Greek. But when he wrote and when he spoke, he boldly said, this is the gospel. Jesus Christ is the way to rightness in a relationship with God. And he boldly never backed down from that message. So my word to you today is a reminder that the message of Jesus Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation and that you never need to be ashamed of that gospel. Here in North America, uh, the gospel message, the uniqueness of Christ as the only way, I am the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me, is an offensive message. It is one in which you may be shamed, one in which you may be pushed to the side of the conversation. But I call you as Paul has has boldly written, and these words echo in our hearts today, be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation to those who trust him, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. So be bold in your proclamation of the gospel, whatever your role in the church and society may be. Let's look at Paul's mission Three aspects of that, which I think are appropriate for you and me today as, as members of B.H. Carroll Theological Institute, that his, met, his mission was local, it was diverse, and it was global. 
So let's look at the global first. I mean, local first. As you know, uh, Paul's primary praxis place of the gospel was in local assemblies at the ecclesia of God's people, where the word of God was shared, the gospel was celebrated, baptism, the sharing and remembrance of Christ and the supper. All those came together in local gatherings. Uh, it was a it was through these local places of service that uh, the gospel furthered itself. I am pleased that the primary strategy of B.H. Carroll has always been the local church. Our desire to return local uh, theological education back to the local church is one of those ways in which we say it is the church, not the seminary. The seminary serves the church. The church does not serve the seminary. We are here to provide the equipping through theological education for those that God leads to us to, to guide them in their preparation and in their purpose for ministry. And I, I submit now more than ever that our culture, especially North America, needs the local church to be the training center of God's people. Again, as the discussion of the things of God are being pushed to the margins, uh, organized religion, institutional religion is being passed by for uh, more what seem to be culturally appropriate uh, institutions and, and thoughts, that in these, these places, we must return to the church being the equipping center of God's people. And what we do as B.H. Carroll is that we not only provide, deliver accredited theological education to Christ followers in their context through this network of ministry partners, that not only are we offering and delivering and working alongside to get a degree, we make this same information available to church members so that they may be equipped, that they may be exposed to biblical hermeneutics, to church history, these things that, that the church has been built upon. And so while Paul's strategy, yes, was in places of worship and in the marketplace, but in the home and the ecclesia, the gathering of God's people. And it's interesting to me too that uh, the house church movement continues to grow. And as I have traveled the world with B.H. Carroll in different contexts, that is what church looks like. It is a house church. It is a gathering in a home, an apartment, uh, a back room and a business. Uh, that, that is where the church is. And the church becomes this quilt that is knit together by the Holy Spirit that becomes a covering of grace around the globe. So whatever you do, connect your ministry, your vocation to the local church. For the local church is still plan A for the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And B.H. Carroll will continue to be connected and in service to the local church. The second aspect of, of Paul's uh, mission was that it was diverse. Uh, let me step back and let this be the bridge between these two points. Locally, our namesake, B.H. Carroll, do not forget, was a pastor of First Baptist Church Waco for 29 years. And it was in that ministry, as he was on the board of what became Baylor University uh, and helped create the theology department at the college, then ultimately the university. He, as pastor of the local church, brought university students as well as local pastors into his home and mentored them and shared his library with them. That ministry, and yes, he with George W. Truitt founded uh, Southwestern Seminary and was uh, that institution's first president for three years, and we, we honor that as my alumni, uh, uh, my alma mater, uh, and it has a significant impact. But we recognize the name of B.H. Carroll and his ministry as a local church pastor, a pastor scholar. And one of the things that drew me to B.H. Carroll was this, this emphasis on pastor teacher, 
along with the other elements of pastoral ministry in the local church so that uh, the church can be built up. So it was not only local, but it was diverse. And it is there that uh, Paul wrote many times about not only the access to the gospel, but also the various ways in which the gospel was lived out in people's life. Let's talk uh, for a moment about, uh, uh, about the diversity of ways in which uh, God does his work. Uh, you know, Paul left uh, the institutional work of, of an established religious institution to be known as an artisan. Uh, and that was quite a societal uh, step down. And much of his Corinthian correspondence was over this issue of why don't you claim the power and authority and status of what you were as a Pharisee? But in the name of Christ, he said, I, I am going to live out my life in this fashion. Multiple roles in multiple ways we live out the gospel. And when I look at the list uh, of those who are graduating and before, we have those, I see men and women, many ethnic identities who are professors, pastors, missionaries, counselors, chaplains, teachers, leaders of associations, conventions of churches, children's and youth pastors, leaders of nonprofits. That's how we live out the diverse ways in which we live out the mission call of God on our lives. And we will continue to allow and encourage the variety of the ways in which God lives. We, we live out God's call on our lives. The other aspect of this is the diversity of, of, of those who were part of the mission of God. Paul wrote to his uh, friends in Galatia. I believe this, uh, and we, we can have a seminar about it later, but I believe Galatians was his first letter that he shot off uh, back to the churches after that first missionary journey and all these issues around what do we do with the, the Gentiles. And he wrote in chapter 3, verse 28 of the familiar verse, there is no Greek, Jew nor Greek, male or female, slave or free. All are one in Christ Jesus. Now, let me say this about that statement. This statement does not abolish the identity markers between these groups, but it demolishes the barriers that kept them and us from the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul's society is just like ours. We group people in ethnicity. We group people in gender. We group people uh, in societal uh, status and position. And what Paul says in this is that those are realities, but... They, none of these can keep us from what? The righteousness of God, the gospel of Christ, the power of God into salvation, which is that gospel. And so what we, we declare today is that we are a diverse group. We're diverse in, in many ways. Now, again, like I said, this doesn't abolish the, the, the um, identity markers. There will always be ethnic identity. There will always be gender identity. And by the way, uh, we hold to what Jesus said when he was asked actually about divorce, when he said, hey, have you not read that God created them as male and female? And for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. And then he added, and the two are no longer two, but one. And then he added the punctuation and what God has joined together, let no man separate. So while we hold to these truths, biblical truths, we say those are not, according to the gospel, barriers that prevent access to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we who are members of the family of God must acknowledge who we are physically, who we are emotionally, who we are society, eth ethnically, but to, like the gospel, Proclaim, as Paul did, he is our peace that has broken all of these barriers down. He has destroyed on the cross the wall of hostility and he has taken the two, whatever those two are, and made them one in Christ Jesus. 
We are diverse, yet we are unified in the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. Back to B.H. Carroll very quickly. Uh, we, I want to acknowledge the truth of the fact that B.H. Carroll did fight for the Confederacy. And those who have fought in the Confederacy, held slaves, etc., have been challenged in recent days. Uh, those whose namesakes uh, are related to those matters should examine those and maybe even considering renaming. But uh, let me read a statement uh, that we have formulated uh, that I think states why B.H. Carroll, while serving in the Confederacy Army, still is someone that we will hold up as one in which God made a changed life. Here, here's what it is true that Beach Carroll fought for the Confederacy, but it was after the war. Actually, during the war, he, he argued it would be better for the Confederacy to lose than to win. Uh, he was wounded, came home, uh, went into a season of doubt of his faith, uh, etc. But in 1865, he was introduced to the gospel and grabbed a hold of the message of forgiveness and salvation in Jesus Christ. From there, his life was markedly different with no untoward behavior toward those of other races. In his work, Baptists and their doctrines, he noted church governance should be purely democratic, that is, congregational, and all members should have equal vote without regard to wealth, sex, age, level of education, or most importantly here, race. While he accepted the societal status quo, as most in his day did, he did not speak disparagingly about black Americans, and there was no acrimony toward them in his preaching. In fact, he repeat, had repeated calls for ministry and missions among the black communities of the segregated, segregated uh, South. See, we don't seek to change the name of B.H. Carroll, but we will hold his name up as a redeemed and recreated person in Jesus Christ. You know the gospel. We don't condone sin. We confess sin. And we hold up the cross of Christ as the ransom for our freedom and our forgiveness. We don't commend B.H. Carroll's actions against humanity while a doubter of the things of God, but we celebrate his contribution to the mission of God as a follower of Jesus Christ. His story is our story. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all acknowledge and confess our lack of righteousness before holy God. And it is in Christ alone where we find that status. And so his message was one of unity based on the gospel of Christ. His mission was local. It was diverse in both how he lived out his life and called others to live out their lives, as well as the diversity of ethnicity. You, you know, some of the early crisis in the church was, what do we do with those who aren't like us? Acts 6, the Greek-speaking widows uh, had issues. It was an ethnic problem. Acts 15, what do we do with the Gentiles who are coming in uh, to the movement of Jesus Christ? We've always dealt with those, but it's been the gospel of Christ and the certainty that he is our priest, peace that breaks these barriers down. And then finally, his message, I mean, his mission was global. Uh, uh, I, we know that he, he moved from Tarsus to Jerusalem, to Antioch, to Rome. Uh, some justifiably uh, believe he made it all the way to Spain uh, and then back before his execution by the Roman government. Uh, in Rome, but it was this global aspect. He moved from the uh, a single ethnic group to multiple ethnic groups. He moved from, from a central locale to a global locale. And when, again, I look at uh, those of us who are, who are B.H. Carroll, we have students and graduates in North America, Canada, uh, uh, the U.S., uh, Mexico, uh, sent, uh, South America, South Korea, Russia, China, Vietnam, Cuba, uh, Cuba, uh, continental Africa, Western Eastern Europe, India, Australia. 
We are all on mission together. And it is a global community of faith on mission with Christ to carry out the desires of our Lord and Savior, Christ. Uh, Stan Moore gave me a study from uh, the Lausanne group the other day and simply notes that Christianity is shifting from the global north to the global south, but we are truly a global family. Let me, let me read this conclusion. We belong to a global Christian family made up of 2.5 billion people, about a third of the human family. And with Christians found in every country of the world, we're not a homogeneous or monolithic group, but a diverse assembly representing thousands of people and languages. We are Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, and independent by major tradition. Some of us are evangelicals, Pentecostals, or charismatics, or a combination of these. In addition, there are likely as many as 45,000 denominations, and yet they conclude. And I agree, we may speak the local language, but we are all related to each other by our global faith. Our message is the same. Our mission is the same. Locally focused in whatever way that God has called you, in diverse ways from counselors to chaplains to professors to teachers to staff members, different ethnic groups, different ways of of seeing the world and serving the world, and then a global certainty that we are part of the universal church in which God is at work around the globe. So my call to you today is to remind you, be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation for those who believe to the Jew first and to the Gentile for the righteousness of God is revealed in it and the righteous shall live by faith. May the Lord bless you as you proclaim his message and as you live out his mission on your life. Amen. We now come to the presentation and conferring of certificates and degrees. I recognize Dr. Greg Tomlin, who is Carol Fellow, Associate Professor of Christian Heritage and Overseer of the Ministry Certificate Program, who will present the candidates for the Ministry Certificate. Mr. President, we are pleased to present two who have completed all of the course requirements for the Ministry Certificate. Having completed the course of study prescribed, I hereby confer upon you the respective ministry certificate. Jacqueline Capt. James Horn. I now recognize Dr. Stan Moore, Senior Fellow and Registrar, and Dr. Adlin Coto, Director of Master's Degree Programs and Hispanic Studies, who will present the candidates for the Master's Degrees. That's great. Mr. President, the Master Programs Council and the faculty are pleased to present four who have completed all the requirements for the Master of Arts Religion, two who have completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Arts in Theology, two who have completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Divinity, one who has completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Arts Christian Education, and one who has completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Arts in Counseling. By the authority of the Board of Governors and the recommendation of the faculty, and having completed the courses of study prescribed, I hereby confer upon you the respective master's 
degrees with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. Anna L. Brooks, Master of Arts, Religion. Anna is a resident of Katy, Texas, where she serves at Miracles of Faith Deliverance Church Ministries as a pastor. Anna's plans after graduation include implementing what she has learned and continuing to grow the ministry to which she is called with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Anna would like to give thanks to her parents who passed away last year and this year. She would also like to thank her community of friends and family who encouraged her to keep going, proofed papers, and shared knowledge on various topics, including her dad, Joseph Morris, her mother, Laverta Lawson, Helen Tompkins, Katrina Johnson, Lou Greer, Trellis Clay, Rochelle Theodore, Richard Theodore, and Pastor Ralph West. Anna said she was encouraged most by her professors because they were helpful and loved Jesus and his word. She is also thankful for Mary Amy in the Carol's Bursar office and to Dr. Koto, who made herself available to map out the classes needed for her to complete the master's program. John Kyle Childress, Master of Arts, Religion. John is a resident of Anderson, Texas, where he serves as senior pastor at Anderson Baptist Church. He would like to sincerely thank his wife, Becky, who has always supported him in ministry. Kyle appreciates the ability to attend and complete seminary at his own pace, allowing him to spend time with family and serve God as a pastor. Matthew Charles Edwards, Master of Arts, Religion. Matthew, Matt, is a resident of Waxahachie, Texas, where he serves as Director of Security at First Baptist Church, Waxahachie. Matt would like to thank his family members for supporting his seminary journey, including Rochelle, Taylor, Haley, Casey, and Joshua. He is also thankful for the support of the Carroll faculty and staff, especially Dr. David Ritzma, Dr. Karen Bullock, and Dr. Wade Berry. Richard Douglas Field, Master of Arts, Religion. Doug is a resident of Georgetown, Texas, where he attends Terra Nova Church and has served as a deacon of member care and on the church security team as well as taught an adult Sunday school class. After graduation, Doug would like to continue to serve in Christian education or in public safety chaplaincy. He would like to thank his parents, Dick and Sue Field, his three children, Brandy, Rick, and Lacey, and his fiance, Robin McLaurin, for their support during his time in seminary. Doug said he enjoyed the various perspectives he encountered on how to study God's word while at Carroll and appreciates that his professors were not only teachers, but were also willing to share their own life experiences and to walk this journey with him. Warren R. Etheridge, Master of Arts in Christian Education. Warren is a resident of Fort Worth, Texas, where he serves as director of the Horn Frog Baptist Student Ministry, the BSM there, at TCU and is focused on making disciples and sending horned frogs to the ends of the earth. For their support for his seminary journey, Warren would like to thank his daughter, Wren, and especially his wife, Sarah, who has sacrificed time and taken on many jobs at home so that he could be a successful student. Warren shared that he appreciates being equipped for ministry without leaving the front lines of ministry. All this while being shaped by incredible professors who bent over backwards to work with him and helped him learn to be an effective minister of the gospel. Samuel C. Parrish, Master of Arts in Counseling. Samuel resides in Fort Worth, Texas, where he attends University Baptist Church and serves as a discipleship group leader 
and on the recovery ministry leadership team. Samuel plans to take the necessary steps to obtain licensure as a professional counselor in the state of Texas and plans to return to support group and group therapy work after graduation. He would like to thank his wife, Jacqueline Parrish, his parents, Tim and Debbie Parrish, and his in-laws, Clint and Charlotte Young, for supporting him during his time in seminary. Samuel shared that despite being a remote student, he was encouraged by the many professors and advisors who always had time and energy to help him overcome challenges that may have otherwise derailed him from completing his degree. He also said he was positively surprised by how supported he felt in an online only program. Thomas Jason Connell, Master of Arts, Theology. Thomas TJ is a resident of Hope, Arkansas and president of Living Hope Disability Ministry, which ministers to people with physical and intellectual challenges. After graduation, TJ hopes to teach Bible classes at a two-year college or become a pastor. He is currently a member of Unity Baptist Church and would like to thank his grandmother who read assignments out loud to him and proofread his papers for supporting him during his time in seminary. What TJ said encouraged him most during his time at Carroll was the many professors and the material that he read. Ariel Nathaniel Martinez, Master of Arts, Theology. Ariel is a resident of El Paso, Texas, where he serves as lead pastor of Del Sol Church. After graduation, Ariel will continue to serve his church and looks forward to taking a nice vacation this summer. He would like to thank his wife, Lauren, his parents, Fernie and Lily, his brothers and parents-in-law for their support throughout his seminary journey. Ariel said that what encouraged him most during his time at Carroll is the community and the connections he was able to build with fellow students. Russell Tanner McCarson, Master of Divinity. Russell is a resident of Victoria, Texas, where he currently serves as student and college pastor at Parkway Church. After graduation, he plans to continue in this capacity and would like to thank his loving wife, Ashley, for supporting him all along the way, adding that she has been a constant source of encouragement to him when he needed it most. Russell would also like to thank his parents who embraced and encouraged him to seek out his call to ministry. He said what encouraged him most about his time at Carroll is that the staff has always valued and encouraged him as a pastor, follower of Christ, and student. Jonathan Edward Yates, Master of Divinity. Jonathan resides in McKinney, Texas, where he serves as Minister of Families with Children at Cross Point Church. He plans to continue in this capacity after graduation and would like to thank his wife, Melissa, daughter, Autumn, and son, Lincoln, for supporting him throughout his seminary journey. Jonathan said he was encouraged most during his time at Carroll by Dr. Joseph Cathy, who met with him regularly and read the Hebrew Bible with him. He said he was also greatly encouraged through Dr. Sharon Gresham's class on spiritual disciplines. Dr. Scott Schiffer's classes on Christian theology and Dr. Gene Wilkes classes on biblical interpretation, adding that there were many other great teachers. I congratulate our graduates on what these master's degrees represent. I now recognize Dr. Karen Bullock, Carroll Fellow and Distinguished Professor of Christian Heritage and Director of the PhD program, and Dr. Carl Fickling, Director of our Doctoral Ministry program, who will present the doctoral candidate. Mr. President, the Doctoral Programs Council 
and the faculty of the Doctor of Ministry degree are pleased to present one who has completed all the requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Ministry. By the authority of the Board of Governors and upon the recommendation of the faculty and having completed the course of study prescribed, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Ministry with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. David Jackson Uswell. Dr. David Jackson Uswell began his academic achievements following high school by attending the University of Arkansas and earning the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Over three decades later, with God's Spirit stirring in him, he came to B.H. Carroll Theological Institute and earned his Master of Divinity degree. For the last 18 years, Dr. Uswell has served on staff at First Baptist Church of Bryan, where he is the singles pastor. Dr. Uswell's DMIN project is entitled Developing a Servant Leadership Training Model for Single Adult Leaders at First Baptist Church of Bryan. This project provided a ministry to single adults with a biblically-based leadership model. Dr. Useful chose the servant leadership model as the best model for working in a community of faith because of its sustainability and effectiveness, focusing on Christ's earthly ministry. Dr. Useful would like to thank his family supporting him for the quest for higher education, especially his wife of 39 years, Angela. He would also like to thank the staff the members of the single ministry, and the whole First Baptist Church of Bryan for graciously allowing him to pursue his higher education. I congratulate you on the accomplishment and earning of this Doctor of Ministry degree and what it means to you and your ministry. Will you join me in celebrating and congratulating these who have finished the long journey of accomplishing these degrees? It is my privilege today to introduce to you our honorary graduate and our honorary alumnus, as well as recognize those who have had a important part of the mission and history of B.H. Carroll who have gone to be with the Lord. Delta Epsilon Chi is an honor society with the Association of Biblical Higher Education. The honor is described this way as part of Paul's list of greetings in Romans 16.10, he references the disciple with this distinguished appellation, tested and approved in Christ. The three Greek words translated approved in Christ, found in Romans 16.10, began with the three Greek letters, Delta, Epsilon, Chi, and thus the name and meaning of the ABHE Honor Society. Our Delta Epsilon Chi graduate this year is R.L. Martinez, Master of Arts in Theology, a native of El Paso, Texas, associate pastor at Del Sol Baptist Church, and one who which the faculty voted as one of our graduates this year to uh, be worthy of this honor of the Association of Biblical Higher Education. He demonstrates Christian character and leadership ability and has a cumulative grade point average of that of at least 3.3 in a four point uh, system. And he has done that uh, magnificently. So congratulations, Ariel, on this recognition. Our honorary alumnus uh, this time around is Dr. Bill Bryan. Uh, Dr. Bryan was a PhD graduate with us in 2011. He is the pastor of First Baptist Church, Abington, Virginia. He is a resident fellow. First Baptist Church, Abington is a teaching church in the Carroll Teaching Network. And uh, he also worked diligently with us to gain physical presence of teaching uh, with the state of Virginia. And uh, while COVID kind of slowed that down, uh, we have that access if, if possible. Dr. Bryan has taught for us in our all of our global sites. 
He's an Old Testament major, and we're grateful to him as he represents, by this degree, intellectual achievement, Christian character, and leadership ability. And so, Dr. Brian, thank you for who you are to us and alongside of us as you receive uh, this honorary uh, recognition. Also, we note this year in memoriam, Dr. H. Houston Greenhall, Jr. He was a distinguished fellow at uh, B.H. Carroll. He pastored in the UK, received his MA in, in theology in Cambridge. He was a missionary in Sao Paulo, Brazil for 25 years, and then came to First Baptist Church, Garland, where he pastored a Hispanic uh, congregation. His PhD was in theology and uh, learned from uh, his wife and his celebration of his life that as he dealt with the complications of COVID in his lungs, that uh, they came and said, do you want to have uh, this one possible procedure? And he looked at his wife and said for, and he named his student, his PhD student that he was supervising at the time. And uh, he said, I want to go as long as I can to help this one who is in my care. And I think that demonstrated what a distinguished fellow B.H. Carroll is and really who Houston Greenhaw is. And so we will miss him, but we celebrate his life. Also, Dr. Harry B. Hunt, uh, Jr. was also a distinguished uh, fellow. He was an Old Testament uh, major and, and taught that. Uh, he taught at uh, Southwestern uh, for uh, many years, uh, teaching Old Testament and Semitic languages uh, actually for 26 years, and then served the Carroll community in Old Testament and language studies uh, as a distinguished fellow. Both Dr. Creenhaw and Dr. Hunt are exemplary of the distinguished faculty that we have and those who have served the Lord over a long period of time. And we're honored to have served with them. Uh, we pray for their families, and we know that uh, God is rejoicing in their presence and they and His uh, as they have received the reward, good and faithful servants. On behalf of the Board of Governors and the faculty and staff of the B.H. Carroll Theological Institute, I want to offer each and every graduate our congratulations. Let us pray. Our Father, we give thanks for the gift of life, especially the lives of these who graduate today. It is our prayer that you would bless and empower them as they follow the path of service before them. We're grateful for a place the B.H. Carroll Theological Institute, where skills can be sharpened and vision focused. Our prayer, Lord, is the prayer of your psalmist. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. These things we pray in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And all God's people said, Amen. Once again, on behalf of the Board of Governors, to each and every one of you graduates and your families, we say congratulations.